Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel Creations Resources. We are looking at different aspects of research methodology. Now, right now we are going to look at the structure of a research proposal. Already in the previous episode, we have spoken about the guidelines for a research proposal. So, obviously one needs to begin with the title. And now, it is crucial what you name it, right? Because that's the first thing people are going to see when they see your research proposal. So it's very necessary that it has to be concise, but at the same time, it should give all the relevant or all the um, needed information. So it has to be informative as well. And of course, it has to capture the essence of the research proposal. So in simple terms, catchy, but informative. Then comes the abstract. So you have to briefly summarize the proposed project or in your uh, abstract. And uh, you need to give the reasons or the rationale for the, this particular study. And uh, if you have some hypotheses, then you can put that in the abstract as well. So um, next, of course, is introduction. So if you recall, in the guidelines, we had said that the purpose of writing a research proposal is mainly to convince your audience, so whoever it is. Um, if it's a PhD a research proposal, it could be the research committee. If it's a funding agency, it could be the committee who's going to uh, grant you the funds. Or uh, So you need to convince them. So here, introduction is very crucial especially the opening paragraph of your research proposal because that's how people are going to start looking at your project so um, it has to be creatively written but at the same time you have to make sure that it emphasizes whatever is the relevance for that research problem because people will get convinced only if they realize that okay this is relevant to the times and it's necessary to do this work and of course you need to show that you are the right candidate to conduct this research and for that purpose you will need to demonstrate your understanding of this particular field to which your research problem belongs so clearly define the research problem and also if it uh, is from uh, established thing then then you can tell that okay this was already done but there are certain gaps in the knowledge and then you can address them after introduction is the background so um, you need to give so this also reflects that you've actually studied before preparing uh, or before uh, writing this research proposal and you can give a brief history of the topic for example if you are have a project in case of nanomaterials say gold nanomaterials then you can give some brief history of and uh, the basic definitions or some introductory lines about the field of nanotechnology and the importance of gold nanoparticles in it and of course you have to link it to its relevance today then comes the literature survey now actually this takes maximum time because you have to be very meticulously taking down all those references which are uh, related to the field in general and which you have referred to before coming up with this research problem so you need to tell whatever has been done so far and uh, how it leads to uh, the research proposal that you are giving that means where are the gaps or what more needs to be done or if there are some already uh, present methods for example and they have certain disadvantages then you have to portray that these are the methods you give the references and uh, now we are coming up with a new method which will be uh, advantages or basically it will circumvent all these disadvantages and here of course you have a certain referencing format and you have to abide by that when you do the literature survey so the most time taking part and uh, of course very important part so when you decide to 
write your research proposal start immediately with the literature survey so start collecting the references um, which you can use in your proposal then of course we come to the actual research proposal and you have to talk about all the objectives so what questions do you need wish to answer and uh, don't be very ambiguous or don't beat about the bush when it comes to objectives you have to be uh, right you should be writing it clearly and uh, especially in case of science uh, experiment oriented research proposals they have to be measurable and of course the objectives they are going to emerge or uh, from the problem statement so they have to be linked to that then after objectives comes the methodology so uh, you would have already given a lot of thought to how you wish to proceed and that you need to put down on the paper here so you have to describe the research desi design if, how you have designed the experiments if at all and what techniques will you be using and uh, what me methodology you, you will be using and there are two parts one is generation of data which you will be collecting and then of course the analysis of data so you need to mention all this and of course then while doing that you need to um, justify whatever approach you have chosen right and uh, discuss the strengths of it especially over those mentioned earlier in the literature survey and of course you can be candid and uh, mention limitations if any and it has to be very logical and organized because this is how this is going to happen step by step so a person should know about it very well then comes the section on resources so uh, you need to here you will because especially if you are writing it uh, for getting funding then this is very important that you need to mention what all resources you require so it could be instruments it could be equipments certain facilities um, if it's a chemical based or chemistry based research then certain chemicals and some labware softwares whatever database if you need to refer to all that you have to meticulously list it here then after doing that now these things they are little uh, subjective to uh, where you are writing it so for example in phd proposal not everyone expects you to give a timeline but if it's a research grant that you are looking for definitely you need to give a timeline and it has to be very realistic so this word is very important so there depending on whatever is the total project period you are expecting you can divide it into equal intervals say for example suppose if it's a five year project then you can write that at the end of one year what goals do you expect to have reached at the end of second year what would you have done at the end of third year what could you have done and so on and so forth so this is a very realistic part then of course come the results conclusions uh, so here of course you are yet to do the experiment so everything is in the future and you are going to uh, describe the results which are expected or the outcomes which you feel you would get and of course you have to emphasize on the impact of your research so um, there of course you can link it to how uh, your research is going to contribute to the field and how it is going to um, address the gaps if any and then of course there are uh, some things which may or may not be necessary it depends on what kind of research proposal you are writing again uh, usually uh, it is specified what all you need to mention but it is preferred that your research project is environment friendly and it helps the society so uh, you can talk about how you are going to uh, disseminate the research results how are you going to or where you will be presenting them and so on and so forth and whether whatever expenses you are going to need them so uh, of course budget here i have not written it separately because in a phd research proposal you may not be asked to give that but of course if you are asking for a funding that's the most important part and you have to highlight it and they have certain formats so you have to abide by that and 
mention everything what all expenses are expected and for what whether it's for the material that you're using or the instruments or if someone is going to be salaried uh, you're going to take help of some people then that or travel expenses say if you wish to present it in conferences and so on re registration fees etc but that's optional that may not be necessary in every research proposal so it's a very crucial document and uh, as we had seen in the guidelines you need to really have a convincing tone when you write a research proposal and um, that's how it is going to be and make sure that don't you don't make any unrealistic claims keep it realistic so that uh, even the reviewers who are going through that also understand that okay this is a genuine proposal okay so hope this helps you when you write your own research proposal thank you